Okay, we're standing here on West Washington Street in front of the home of James Dixon Roman. He was an important figure in the story. He was a former U.S. Congressman, served one term in Congress during the Mexican War, served along with uh, the likes of uh, President Lincoln, Vice President Alexander Stevens of the Confederacy, Horace Greeley, uh, John Quincy Adams. And uh, he was also the president of the Hagerstown Bank, which was the largest bank in Washington County. This is one of the few remaining buildings that exist today that have a direct relationship or role in the ransom. Now, when the town uh, city council was presented with the demands by General uh, McCausland, they didn't know what to do. What was being demanded was outside of their legal scope. So they came here to visit with what was the town's most prominent citizen, Mr. Roman. And it was here that he, they concocted uh, a, the initial plan to, of how to initially deal with the, the Confederates. Mr. Roman was incapacitated at the time due to something going bad with his back. It was some sort of spinal tumor, perhaps. It ultimately claimed his life a couple of years later. But uh, he was uh, hobbling around on crutches. He could not get all the way to the uh, town hall where McCausland had made his headquarters, which is about three blocks from here. So they decided to arrange with the Confederates to meet instead of at town hall at the courthouse, which is only about a half a block east of here. And in a way that kind of also created a, a possibility of, of not ceding all of the control in the discussion perhaps to the Confederates. They negotiated a place to meet and that was at the um, at the courthouse. Okay, we are at the site of the Washington County Circuit Court building. The building behind me is the current Circuit Court building. It was built in 1871 to replace the original courthouse, which was built in the 18-teens and designed by Benjamin Latrobe. Unfortunately, in 1871, there was a devastating fire that destroyed the courthouse, plus a few adjoining buildings on the adjacent side street and this was built to replace it. The courthouse is an important stop in our tour on the ransom because this is where the actual agreement on how to handle the ransom was hammered out between the town leaders and the Confederates. Now with Congressman Roman being on crutches and rather immobile, the arrangement was made to meet with the Confederates here rather than at the Confederate headquarters at City Hall, which was about two blocks from here. Uh, this is only about a half a block from Congressman Roman's home. So they made arrangements, uh, the town council plus Roman and a few other prominent citizens to meet with General McCausland and his staff here. The problem that was developed here is that what McCausland was demanding, $20,000, 1,500 complete sets of men's clothing, all was completely outside of the legal authority of the city council to deal with. In Maryland municipal law, you have a situation where only certain tower powers are delegated by the state government to a local jurisdiction. Cooperating and providing resources to an enemy of the Republic is not one of them. So as a result, what was being demanded was something that was completely um, illegal, but the town needed to figure out what to do in order to um, uh, save the town and they would just have to figure out the legal niceties later. Part of the problem was that they knew that they could not get 1,500 complete sets of men's clothing. Keep in mind that a lot of people had fled the town and locked up their homes. A lot of the stores had emptied out their inventories. And then there's a lot of people who were just out of town because they were Confederate sympathizers or serving in the Confederate because this was a uh, Confederate army because this was a divided community. So in here, or the building that was here before, the agreement was hammered out where the Confederates would accept all of the clothing that could be uh, collected, but the money would be provided by local banks. Now the local banks needed to figure out exactly how they were going to protect their interests by providing money to the town. But that would all be worked out when they, uh, when they meet with the uh, the board of directors of the, of the various banks. 
But this location here was important because this is where the focus of the community attention was. Everybody was kind of gathered around here trying to figure out what was going on. And ultimately, when the clothing was collected, insufficient to meet the demands as it was, it all occurred right here essentially in front of the courthouse. So if you could possibly imagine the community members who are watching this all unfold and they're seeing the material being counted and realizing they weren't coming anywhere close to meeting the demands and expecting their town was soon to be burned. Only to find out that was not going to be the case later.